Another day throwing swim feeders. It's not so bad so far, we're on to the bream already. Roll that intro. <laughs> Back on this, uh, this small landlocked venue and it's not absolutely throwing it down with rain which is nice. I'm able to fish in a t-shirt which is nice. Just fishing the easy 30 meter casts into about maybe 6 to 7 feet of water. 20 gram, 20 gram guru mesh, or not mesh, I don't know what they call this, Guru distance feeders I think, which is a bit weird for using them for only chucking them 30 metres. Basically one of these. I started off the first first part of the, the session by chucking these, these are the bait up feeders, and they basically fed in so far I would say a good uh, well, what do you think it was in that bag, Steve? About a pint and a half of maggots? I fed a pint and a half of casters, even. And the swim is buzzing where I'm fishing, so that is good. I've had one decent bream and one small bream and a whole load of little rod. So, the fish are here. We just have to keep the fish. Every now and then, I th what I think's happening is it goes quiet because I think the bigger fish have pushed out the smaller fish. And it just needs the bigger fish to come across where you've got your bait and then you you know you'll catch a bream and it'll go quiet you know you might catch one or two bream in quick succession and it'll go quiet the smaller fish will come back in and you start getting smaller fish but smaller fish there's not much you can do except try and feed them up to get them away and leave a leave what i would think is a substantial bed of bait on the bottom so when the bream do come in they think all right there's a lot of feed here i'll stay At least that's my views and my thoughts. It could be complete bullshit, but that's my view. Not fishing by myself today. Steve is the responsible adult for the day. But nice breeze. If it was a bit more overcast, I think it would be a lot better. Oh, that was a bite. Fishing with the old Dutch Master 12 foot 8 60 gram feeder rod Extremity 620 rail Basically my feeder gear for standard feeder fishing I haven't fed any chop worm yet so but I'm gonna throw this in. If you were to bream you would be on that too, wouldn't you? I'll run through the bits in a minute. Just get this cast out. Ground bit's quite good. I made a kilo of black crumb. And a kilo of census magic. Mixed it quite dry so it should pop out of the fader and form a nice cloud. And it's working because we're catching fish. Just then. <laughs> Da, 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 da. Stays into the brain, that was a bit of a pantomime, the old net fell off. It's a decent brain. We're at that point of the day where 
the sun is above the head. Unfortunately, there's no cloud. So vain this is a shallow fishery. That's got pretty good water clarity. That kind of means that the uh, the fish kind of go off the feed. Strange, this place last week it was horsing down with rain. And it was a great day. Except for the whole soak to the balls sort of thing. But, I'll give it a go for another while and see if we can get some of these rod on the feed. One hour later. It's all gone a bit crazy. Watch this. I'm going to take the empty feeder and fill it. Turn you around, see? Full feeder. Won't cast out. Right, that's me on the bottom. And here I'm getting bites. Is this? Oh. It's not even getting time to hit the bottom, and I have rod. I'm trying to feed those up, <laughs> hopefully to get the bream in. On a size 10 hook, I'm on 0 0.25 fluorocarbon uh, hook length. I think I've got about seven maggots on the hook. <laughs> and I'm trying to get out to the trying to get the bait to the bottom. <laughs> and the tip's rattling as it's sinking down. Here we go again. I reckon if the bit can get to the bottom, it might have a chance of a bream. But it's getting through the little thousands of little rud that's the problem. Well, problem. We're catching fish, it's not a problem. Just not the, the right sort of fish at the minute. Two hours later. The teeny tiny rud had grown. Well, that was last one did. It was about half a pound, three quarters of a pound. I've put on a plastic maggot just so that there's actual maggot on the hook by the time it hits the bottom. <laughs> just to see if I can catch one of the bream. It's at the, we're in a nice lovely part of this lake and it's the, uh, the winds in our face which is quite nice. <laughs> I think I missed this one. 
Yeah. Wind's in her face, which is good. It means that anything that's on the surface is going to be blown in here. So, hopefully bream. Hopefully. I don't think it'll happen instantly, but I'm hoping it'll happen before I go home. Lead maggots aren't even touched. Still fishing a size 10 hook. With like 11 teen maggots on the hook. As many maggots as I can physically cram on the hook. Plus the plastic one. It's been, it's been a good day. Both catching fish, which is nice. There's a load of trout here, and the trout are just about surfacing now, which is, which is great to see. Every now and then, there'd be a whole shoal of rudd just jumps out the, out the, uh, out of the, the water. So there's something obviously in having a munch. Apparently there's big perch in here, and there's trout. There's no pike, so it's a it's a big trout. It'll be a, a fair ox trout, cannibal trout, or cannibalistic trout that eats other things. You know, but then again, I think that's a bit of a, a bit of a strange saying. It's a bit of a strange thing to say, and people make the distinction between fair ox and normal trout. You know, a trout's a little predator. If it can fit it in its mouth, it will eat it. Small trout eat small fish. It's only natural that when they get to be big trout, they'll eat slightly bigger fish. But we haven't had a trout on, so... I don't know if that's a plus or a negative. Trout on a feeder rod. That's always a good, that's always a bit of, a good bit of fun, that. Just get in little teeny tiny taps of the tip. You know, because we're fishing not that it's not that deep here. It's only maybe about six or seven feet. And I reckon that the top couple of feet is just solid with little rod. Well, rod about this sort of size. And it's getting through this the rud to the bottom where hopefully the bigger fish are. You know. This would be the perfect little lock to stock whales catfish in. Somewhere out there there's a there's a trout angler who's watching this video and knows this venue and is now freaking out. Because of the idea that I might put a Wells catfish in here. Bearing in mind that I have no access to Wells catfish, so don't freak out. Oh. This is the size of the rod. Hello viewers! Don't remember, don't forget to like, share and subscribe! Haha! <laughs> <laughs> the place is alive with small rudd. I'm hoping now that the sun's just dipping behind that hill. The bream might come back. But I'm still fishing. A size 10 hook. With about seven maggots plus a fake one. Just so that there's some maggots when the uh, the bait eventually gets to the bottom. Because it just gets mullered on the way down. See where I'm casting my, my feeder? It's only at 30 meters. I've been hitting the same swim the whole day. 
the place is just fizzing with fish on the surface. Steve's abandoned the feeder to go onto the float because the that's just tiny rod. Well, not so much tiny rod. The pike angler in me says that they are actually really, really nice rod. They would be awesome on a sunken float pat noster rig with a little rattler bead stuck on the trace so that when the the little rod does a wee dance, the, the rattler bead makes a wee noise and it's like when you when you ring a bell and it's time to go and eat your dinner. But no, it's a it's been a it's been a good day. Still no trout, although we're not really fishing for them. That's a bit no, that's a small fish. That's a small fish. That's the rod. That one managed to unhook itself and fall into the land into the keep net, so it was a it was a rather helpful rod. But here's how I'm having to try and get around those little rod on the, on the way down. They just rip the maggots off the hooks. So to get past that, I'm using a fake maggot. This is just a normal plastic maggot. It doesn't float, just a normal plastic maggot. And I will show you now how many maggots I'm fitting on this hook. There we go. That was six maggots. I fed nearly all my ground bit. I have fed easily about three pints, three and a half pints of caster. I have fed three pints of party mix, seeds, corn, hemp. and two bream. But I'm hoping now that it's getting the light, the sun's going off, maybe the bream will start to uh, to venture out and have a bit of a munch. I hope, at least that's the plan. Time to pack up I think. It's been one of those days where I've caught that many little rud. My shoulders and arm are sore, so I have no idea how much I have. I know I had some decent bream, but it's all a bit of fun, so I'm going to walk up to the top of this field, drive my van back to the bottom of this field to load the gear, and then Have a look at what we've caught, eh? It's time to weigh them up. Let's see what they look like, eh?
couldn't believe the earache I got. I got somebody giving me like a like proper abuse saying, you know, oh you didn't soak your waistline. It's like, Jesus Christ, guys, give me a fucking break. I'd say things like that. Like this when isn't people, my, this isn't my first fucking rodeo. When people are fucking weighing the fish and all, the fish look really, really dry, and they're photographing them. You know, you've had the fucking thing out the water too long, and that sort of shit. That's a good way to fish, man. You've got a good catch there. Brilliant. That's a nice bit of fish. Yes. Right. No doubt. That fucking big green. Everything. Yes, everything. It's a monster. That's a fucking <coughs> cracking fish. There's one of them there too. Right. Send you the picture. Let's just hold the red button. Oh Jesus, sneeze. I'm not sure them two green are showing. I'm gonna hold this big boy. Yeah, I don't see why you don't. It's a cracking big fish now. the other one. Huh? Oh, we didn't see you release them, so you must have kept them for your pike bit. That's like... <laughs> I didn't say yet. Why do you think you go fishing? Find them up the top. That's like Jesus Christ. Anyway, nearly 11 kilos yep. in blistering sunshine. Yep, clear, very not, clear water. Not bad.
Go on, Derek, quit playing around with it. Oh, oh. I'm sorry there wasn't more footage of the actual um, fishing on the Sunday. It was only a three hour charter. There was people on the boat that weren't in uh, my party. So it was kind of a bit weird, you know, taking footage of people that were, you know, it would have been different if, you know, they, they, you know, I'd been, been happy with it or kind of agreed to it, but I didn't want to go to ask people because you just feel like a dickhead. You know, doing stuff like this is uh, strange enough at times when you have to kind of hold up a camera and talk to it, you know, and you kind of feel like a bit of a tit. But there wasn't much footage. There wasn't much mackerel, to be fair. I mean, I came home and ended up freezing 35 of them. It wasn't a good three hours. You know, some could say, you know, okay, it's the end of August, the, the summer shoals have gone, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'd maybe say that the charter could have done a bit better, you know, once we found fish, maybe kept the boat on fish as opposed to uh, motoring off to uh, nothing, you know. In a three hour fishing session, especially when you pay for a charter, you kind of want to be put on fish for three hours, but that didn't, that didn't happen. Uh, look, it is what it is. We caught some Pollock. I didn't bring any Pollock back. I just kind of chucked mine back in the back in the sea. Um, my brother-in-law Derek, uh, he brought some pollock back. He was going to fillet them and cook them up. Young Jake caught some pollock, which was good. It's good to see Young Jake catching fish again. So we'll have to get him back out this winter. Young Jake isn't uh, so small anymore. Young Jake's six foot two, so he's now the height of me. <laughs> Oh, but we'll get them out fishing in the winter time. The pike fishing season is rapidly coming up upon us, so I'm looking forward to that. Also, good news, I've got a new job. I'm no longer on furlough pay. I'm no longer on, you know, sitting at home on the never, never promise of getting, getting back to work. So I went out and found a new job. Uh, I've started there. It's Monday to Friday, it's better pay than my old job, and it's, from what I can gather, from what I'm picking up now, it's not, uh, it's, it's well within my skill set, so here's to having some, here's to having some disposable income again, you know, it really fucking destroys your manhood having to go to your wife and ask her, can you lend me 20 quid to go and buy bait to go fishing? But back to the work, good, good news. Full-time work also means that I'll be, might be able to kind of put some money away to get some ply, marine ply and some fiberglass. And I might actually get the, the boat that's parked out there on the driveway. I'll get it, maybe get it started before the, get it finished before the winter. Get the, uh, the old girl back in the water. I mean, I have the, I have like a, you know, there's like the four horse outboard that's there. There's a battery operated outboard that's there. But I would have to buy a ten horse. That or not, that four is enough to get me from A to B slowly. But I would put a ten or a nine point nine horse on that fourteen foot scene up. Um, I just need to floor it, fiberglass the floor, paint it, sort the trailer. So it's not an awful lot of work. But I just need to, you know, get the funds scraped together to do it. You know, new house, new baby, all needed funds. Uh, so it's good now that I'm back into uh, full-time employment. I also want to say thank you to everyone that's out there that's uh, helping the channel grow. Uh, I couldn't do this without you guys, and I do this uh, this nonsense for you guys to enjoy. So if you want to see more of this sort of content where maybe doing more days sea fishing or do something different, then put it in the comments. Let me let me uh let me hear what you have to say. 
I am kind of limited, you know. Like, okay, I can go to places like I, I live in Oma, like in the west of Northern Ireland. So Oma to Bondoran's about an hour and ten minutes drive from me. Uh, Oma to Killy Beggs, that's about an hour and a half. Those are the two sort of closest areas where we could get a charter boat. But we're coming to the end of the summer season, so there's not going to be many charter uh, operations happening. Just purely because we're coming to the, the winter time, you know. I have been looking at some... Uh, there's guys that do blue shark fishing and uh, tuna fishing in the Atlantic. And I was looking at trying to get in touch with them, but because of the COVID, uh, nothing's happening. Hopefully now that things start to relax a bit more, we can get to do that. But again, that looks like it could be a next year, next uh, spring sort of plan. So, tuna fishing. It's not John West tuna. It's not out of a tin. We're talking nice, proper, wild tuna. <laughs> not dolphins that's been blended up and pretend they tuna. But I'm, enjoy I'm, I'm looking forward to the challenges I have in front of me. So let's get stuck into them. I, again, do the YouTube stuff. want to say thank you to everyone's liking, sharing, and subscribing. I want to say a uh, big thumbs up to you guys. You're you're awesome. And until the next time trips, tight lines.